Hey, it's Mike over at FishYourAssOff.com and today what we're talking about is catching flounder in the winter. One of these questions you get a lot of times is can you catch flounder in the winter? In Florida or anywhere, uh, basically. Uh, the answer is yes. Yes, you can, but they're offshore. They went offshore to spawn. So they're in, you say, summertime and they've been up in these uh, tidal creeks and estuaries or wherever they're hanging out, wherever they're finding food and they're happy and there's not a lot of predators after them is where they've been hanging out. But come fall, they start to transition. They start to leave all those places they were uh, all summer long and they start moving closer and closer to the Gulf of Mexico or Atlantic Ocean, depending on where you are in Florida or where you are up the East Coast. Um, they're, they're just moving out because they're going to spawn. It's not a fast thing. They just start filtering their way down. So what you want to do is try to ambush them. So they're ambush predators, but they're going to feed the whole time as they're, as they're leaving their, their summertime places they've been hanging out. And a great place is right in front of these inlets. Because remember, they got to come through the inlets or they got to come through the pass or whatever you have there. So an inlet's more of a man-made thing typically, right? Or these passes between islands if you're on the Gulf, Gulf Coast of Florida. So you just, wanna, you just wanna be there and try to hit them near shore because they, they're probably funneled through, but this is Florida. You know, winter in North Carolina is very different than winter here in Florida. So you can catch them inshore, in fact, all year long, but a lot of the bigger ones are going to move offshore and do that. So you want to, if they're if they're not still in the inlets or right there on, on like a near shore reef or something like that, all you got to do is go offshore a little bit and find yourself some sort of structure. It could be anything. It could be a little rock pile. It could be some ledge of some sort. Just just a difference in water depths. Whatever it is, you just go out there, your reef, your, your rock pile, whatever that kind of structure is, and start jigging for them. And really, I think the best way to do it when you're offshore is going to be, you know, you want to have your, your, your presentation within a foot of the bottom because that's where they are. They're not going to go very far to eat whatever it is you're selling them. So whether it's a lure or a bait or whatever it is, they're not going to go that far. So you got to be within like three feet of them or so. So a great way to fish for them, you find structure, maybe some shallow nearshore reef, whatever it is, and you basically drift in vertical jig, vertical jig right above it. Now, you, you remember something about vertical jigging. You want to keep it right there, but you're going to get snagged a lot if you cast way far out because your line angle is going to be like this, and that line angle is going to get you snagged a lot. This line angle isn't going to get you uh, snagged as much. So you really don't want to make those casts too far out. Let the boat drifting do the work for you. Just kind of vertical jig for them. Try to find them. I'm going to show you the best types of jigs to use. Show you my little flounder jig box. If you look in there, you notice they're all the same color. They're all chartreuse or white. That's a bucktail jig, like a three-quarter ounce. There's like a three-eighths ounce and some quarter ounce. You just don't need any other colors. You just don't. You know, it's just the, the light color. Chartreuse and white, great color combination. You know, if you've watched any of my videos, I always tell everyone if they're fishing for trout, snook, whatever it is, have something dark for murky water and have something light for clear water or just something that's a little bit stained and you're good to go. Well, when it comes to uh, flounder, that's yeah, not really the case. Just, just white. You don't need anything but white. And chartreuse helps, but it can all just be white. They love gulp shrimp. I'm not sponsored by Berkeley, but they just love gulp shrimp. Even though they're more of a fish eater than a shrimp eater. But they love the smell of it is what it is. Here's a, uh, oop, here's a swimming mullet right there. Notice it's white. I'm telling you, just anything white is going to work out for you. It's all you need, right? Let me show you some of these other ones. I fish with three inch paddle tails a lot, just for just about everything. They work just fine for 
flounder too, but you probably want to step up to even the four and five inch type paddle tails because they really do like bigger, bigger baits. Here's a DOA five and a half inch uh, jerk bait. That's a great one. That's a great one right here for, for lots of stuff. But let me just show you how some of these are rigged up because uh, I'll use all kinds of things. I go to the bass department because they have all these funky curly tail things like this and they're really cheap. And when you're fishing on the bottom, you lose a lot of lures. What's this thing called? Creepy crawler. <laughs> yeah. These are all like weird bass baits and stuff, but I'm telling you, they're a great presentation. So here's the curly tail one. Right there. That's a 3 8 ounce uh, jig head. And here's that creepy crawly thing. I'm telling you, that will catch flounder, guaranteed. Bouncing that thing off the bottom, letting it flutter back down with these weird things. That'll catch them. And then DOA, three inch paddle tail, chartreuse head. Now, when you're fishing for these flounder, remember your entire strike zone is basically a foot this way in the water, and you have maybe three feet, <laughs> four feet in the water. If you've ever seen videos of like some sort of flatfish chasing something, it's a fish called a fluke. It's a flounder, flatfish, but it's not what we're catching down here in Florida. We're catching southern flounder and gulf flounder. Southern flounder are the big ones, and gulf flounder are the little ones that only have the three eye spots on them. And both of those are just lazy fish. So the fact of the matter is you gotta be within a foot this way, and maybe three feet, four feet this way, or they're not gonna chase it most likely. So when you're casting, you cast it, bounce it off the bottom, 12 inches, let it flutter back down, reel it, flutter back down, reel it, and just go three feet, 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 till you, till you figure out where these, uh, where these fish are. You just, that's how you do it. That's how you do it when you're going after these flounder. Wherever it is, that's, you gotta cover that area, you gotta cover that area, gotta cover that area. Say you're on some near shore reef and it's, I don't know, 10, 20 feet deep. You just, you're casting, or you're drifting, whatever it is, just, just think of it like a grid. You just wanna cover that area at least every three or four feet as you're moving on through. That's how you have to catch these fish when they're, when they're offshore in the winter time. And that doesn't matter if you're in North Carolina fishing for them, well guess what, you guys still gotta do the same thing. You might have to go 30 miles out to find them, whereas here in Florida, we don't really have that problem. They're, they pretty much stick around pretty close uh, all winter long, you know. We don't, we don't have a, we don't have to go very far to find them. And we can still find them inshore in the winter time. But in general, they all leave inshore and go offshore in the winter months. And that's how you catch them. And that's what you catch them, catch them with. You just need a weight that's going to get down there to get them, right? It might be an ounce or two ounces or three ounces. I don't know however deep you're fishing. You might be in 60 feet of water, 30 miles offshore catching them. Well, all you got to do is same principle. You gotta get it down there, keep it within 12 inches of the bottom and cover that bottom. Just cover that bottom. So if you find a nice reef, go and drift it a few times so you cover the entire reef, nothing there, leave. Go find another one. Because if you don't catch one, you're not catching any. Whereas once you do catch one, there's more. There's always more. There's never just one flounder, ever, ever, ever. They like being around on their flounder. So keep that in mind when you're out there fishing for them in the winter time. So yes, you can catch them in the winter time, depending on where you are. We're lucky in Florida, you can catch them in shore all year long. But I hope that helped. Uh, if you have any other uh, questions or want to learn any more about uh, catching these fish or any fish, any inshore fish, go to fishyourassoff.com. The whole website is about catching flounder, snook, trout, redfish, tarpon, black trout, whatever. If it's inshore, we talk about it. Uh, I think that's it for today, so until next time, we'll see you then. Alright, bye-bye.